preparing to live stream. Got it. I turn my thoughts within, dear Lord, for here is where you dwell, in your kingdom nestled in my heart, where everything is well. I turn my thoughts within, dear God, and find pure love and peace, harmony, the watchword here, apparent doubt and discord cease. For here is where I find the truth, there is one, the all in all, the truth that makes me free to be, I heed its every call. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find is me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. I find is me, dear God, and make manifest. I turn within, dear Lord, for there you dwell. In my heart of hearts, where all is well. The love, the peace and joy that is spirit expressed. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Lifeline. You know, just as I'm about to get into the groove of the music, wow, we, we stop, but I know that that groove is with us. That groove is that which is taking us through the next hour of our Lifeline, an hour of connectivity, liberty, love, and laughter. And this evening, we have an amazing guest. So I just invite you to go get a cup of tea, just or a glass of something, and just settle back, uh, um, get your questions ready, um, and we're going to really, really have a wonderful time this evening. I am practitioner Sandra Cooper, and I will be your moderator this evening. I will introduce our guests in a little bit, but we also have with us uh, pastor of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, Reverend John Scott. And so without further ado, I'd like to ask um, Reverend John, you know, we call the beloved to do our opening affirmative prayer. Oh, thank you, Sandy, and good evening, worldwide spiritual family. It is a joy to add my own words of welcome to Lifeline. And we truly, as Steve sang in our theme song, Turning Within, for there the spirit of love, the spirit of life, the spirit of light, the spirit of laughter, the living spirit almighty is enthroned in perpetual splendor. And so we come together in one accord in this conversation with our amazing guest speaker, knowing that everyone is connected with everyone else in this one mind we call God. And that infinite intelligence fills our consciousness with every idea we need to take one more step on the upward spiraling path of light and life and love and truth into greater than we have ever experienced before. So this evening's Lifeline is truly a transformative experience in which our minds are renewed and our spirits are lifted up to higher and higher octaves of pure love, pure joy, pure beingness. This is the truth which we celebrate and release to law, knowing that as it has been spoken, so it has been fulfilled. And our hearts sing a song of praise and a psalm of thanksgiving that this is already so. As together we say, 
And so, and it, so is. it is. Thank you so much, beloved. You know, friends, uh, Lifeline came into being about two years ago. This is actually our 20th episode. Yes. And we, 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 we were birthed, so to speak, as a response to some of the challenges that popped up during the early months of um, the, the pandemic back in 2020. And we wanted to, to use this opportunity to provide spiritual tools and some strategies so that as a people, we, you know, individually and collectively, we could rise above uh, and, and consciously respond to the challenges that um, we were facing during the, the challenge of, of the pandemic period. And we also want to, one of our primary purposes is to, to, to allow our, our, well, eat, provide, um, you know, tools as well so that we can shift from being fear-based to faith-based. And this evening we have an amazingly powerful woman and she's going to be sharing on a topic that um, when many of us are familiar with coming from Romans 12, chapter two, and it says, be transformed by the renewing of, of your mind. Now there's a whole lot of stuff in that. So I would just quickly like to um, introduce our special guest this evening who is a multilingual native of the Netherlands. Now, she intended at some point in her life to be a, vet a veterinarian, but somehow in 1982, while on a visit to the US, on an extended stay as a tourist, she was introduced to religious science. And as we can say, the rest is history. Five years later, she became a religious science minister and is currently the spiritual director of Centers for Spiritual Living in Morristown, New Jersey. She's a dynamic teacher and a speaker, um, and she is a counselor and organizer of center activities. And, and get this, those activities include a ropes course and skydiving. You know, when you talk about the sky is the limit, this lady invented that idea. <laughs> she has facilitated workshops by um, to the Rotary Clubs, Kiwanis, Al Alcoholics Anonymous, Women's Centers, Senior Citizen Centers, and the prisons. Sounds like it's up your street, Reverend John. Absolutely. She has been teaching meditation at the Morris County Correctional Facility for over 10 years. Her interests as wide and as beautiful as she, as, as, as she seems to be, <laughs> include communing with nature, yoga and fitness, jewelry making, knitting, crafting, reading, holistic health and the environment. A world traveler, she's been to Uzbekistan and Turkey, where she traveled with a group of Sufis, meeting Sufi sheiks and visiting ancient Sufi sites. Her most delicious experience as her adjective, friends, not mine, was honoring the 13th century poet Rumi at his tomb in Konya, Turkey. She's very alive and feels tuned into spirit in a way that's absolutely contagious. So if you rub up against her, as we say in Jamaica, you will catch her, her joy, her happiness. <laughs> her ministry is all about celebrating who we really are, which is spirit in expression. She takes the science of mind teaching very seriously and the, these principles she lives a hundred percent you know so oh and <laughs> the, the last thing she although she takes the science of mind seriously she takes herself very lightly so friends open your hearts and and your arms and just send a big shout out in consciousness to our special guest reverend dr frankie timmons yes. oh oh my goodness oh, this, oh, this, this this renewing of your mind business. What what are we talking about here? <laughs> oh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. I told Sandy that um, Jamaica has been on my bucket list to visit, and she's like, "Well, make it happen." And I'm like, hey, "She's <laughs> right." So um, I'm really honored to be here today, and it's it's just 
kind of funny to me to to listen to my own bio because a part of me is like, really, that's me? I did all that? I am all that? Because I don't always feel that way. But I know, just like everybody watching this now or later, is that we are all a, a work in progress, right? We're all evolving and we're all learning and growing and changing and opening and deepening. And sometimes that happens with experiences that aren't always that much fun. But the idea then is to keep our mind open because that's, that's how it gets renewed. So, ah, uh, the renewing of the mind, isn't that really what science of mind is all about? Indeed. Is that we get to witness and observe as we go through our day-to-day -day living, what we think and what we believe. I often ask myself when I'm struggling with something, well, hey, honey, what is it that you really believe? Uh, it used to be much more critical, <laughs> but I've learned to, to, to choose to have love speak through me. So it's like, what, what are you thinking about that? And do you really believe that? Is that really what wants to be demonstrated and lived? Or is there maybe a new idea? So even very recently, I was journaling, which I love to do, because it's one way that I become conscious and process things. And I was journaling about a complaint that I've had for a very long time. Yes, those of us who've been practicing teach this teaching for decades still catch ourselves holding old beliefs that are causing us suffering. And this was a mm. belief that causes me suffering, even though it's very subtle. And so I began to journal and all of a sudden the words splattered on the page as if I did not write them, as if spirit through me wrote them and said, what if you believe the opposite? Oh. No, what mm. if you believe the opposite? The belief that I was holding was very old. It's about, uh, I don't matter. So that's not true today. I don't believe that today. Um, it's not something I carry around or I feel, but it was just an old belief I became aware of. It's like, ugh there's still a little crumb there of that. And then what if you believed the opposite? And I realized that the opposite of anything limiting that we hold is only a decision away, right? It's just one decision away. Mm. But first we have to become conscious of it. We have to notice that it still lives in here. So sometimes we meet people in this teaching that, well, cancel, cancel. I don't want to think anything negative. I don't want to give it any power. I don't want to give it any thought. Well, we have to. Because in order for us to be renewed in life, we have to be willing to look at the beliefs that we hold that are limiting us or that are causing us suffering. I mean, that's, Absolutely. that's love, right? That's love. That's love. I mean, if you have somebody in your life that you love and they say, I hate myself, you don't say, oh, you're stupid. You don't say, what's wrong with you? You don't say, oh, you're so negative. You say, oh, honey, you give them a hug, right? You take their hands and you look in their eyes and they say, you are love. Right. And so sometimes we don't realize these beliefs that we hold. So it can really just becoming aware of what we hold, what we believe, checking it out, see if it's true. And then asking the question, what if I believed the opposite? And then it's only a decision away. So what do you think, Reverend John? I love that idea. I was at, since we, we, we share this um, love of working in the prison, I was writing on the, on the chalkboard. It's a blackboard with, with white chalk and I misspelled a word. And so I just took my fist and, and, and erased it. 
And I just thought, hey, you, you can rub out just like that. Yes. You can make a choice. I, and I said to the, mm -hmm. the participants, I could have chosen just to leave the word because most of you didn't even notice that it was a, it was a wrong spelling anyhow. Um, but I chose to rub it out and to write the correct thing. And that is a, something that we can choose to do every single day. And it's as simple as that. Just, just make a decision that that's not what I want on, on, the, on, on, the, on the script of my life. That's not what I want on the chalkboard or the whiteboard or whatever color board you have. Um, I want this instead and rewrite the script. So for me, renewing of your mind is really just exercising the, this amazing gift of choice. And as you say, it's a decision away. I don't want this anymore. I, I refuse to be stymied by this old hang up I had about being not enough or about being clumsy. You know, I was a dancer, mm -hmm. for goodness sake, and I grew up all my life thinking of myself as clumsy because I had an old aunt who used to say, give me that, you're too clumsy. And I could hear a voice in my head when I'm trying to do something, you know, something simple like thread a needle. Oh, give me that, you're too clumsy. Wow, mm. the way these things stick with you until you make the decision to move beyond them and to renew your mind and in so doing renew your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love you know, the mm -hmm. Sorry? You know, you rub, she says she likes the, the rub out. Yeah, just erase it. Yeah. You know, um, I'm thinking of um, the preparation of a mole, the cast, you know, um, there is, there's a lot of construction work happening very close to me and <clears throat> i see how they use wood to, to to you know like they're building a wall and they use the wood to frame it and then they pour the concrete and then when they take off the the wood it's this perfectly formed wall and i think that though perhaps we have so you know our, our paradigms and 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 the, the mindset that we have from going way back, it's almost like the, 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 the mold or the cast. Um, and that is what drives our lives. And if we are to believe this statement, be transformed, transformation suggests not just filling a pothole, which is what used to happen on a road that takes us out of Kingston into the beautiful hills of St. Anne to the North Coast. But, you know, ordinary you know, just reform is filling a pothole and fixing the road. Transformation is creating a whole new road, road through a mountain, a highway through a mountain. So transformation, we, you know, we, we need to, is to move from a, a, a way of being, a mold that has us going one way to some other wonderful way that is perhaps completely opposite to what we've been accustomed to all our lives. Some people have said that's too hard. What would you say to them? Well, you know, because I think what happens is we tend to be over identified with the pothole, <laughs> right? So we're over identified with, mm -hmm. with our suffering. Yes. And I think when I'm yes. over identified with my suffering, I'm going to say things like, this is really hard. And I think it's okay, but it has to just be a moment that gives us clarity so that we can arrive then at a different choice. Uh, when mm -hmm. I have a bad day, sometimes I go, okay, so have a bad day, go sleep, go take a nap, go have some ice cream, do whatever, mm, nice. watch TV, you know, but then there has to be a moment where I say, okay, we've, we were done. Now let's shift. So I think when we avoid being honest about our suffering, whether it's subtle or not so subtle, and we say, la, 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 I cannot say it, I cannot think it, and we're critical towards ourselves, then it just sticks. It's like Velcro. Mm, so I think it's like that. really noticing what's hard and what feels hard and just explore it a little bit and then make some different choices about it or choose to look at it in a different way. What if we can see it in a different way? I know for me, when I, I had a difficult year last year with a health issue and I decided to 
look for the blessings and the gifts. And I, I decided to be grateful that things weren't more difficult. And and, and everything was so much easier and the doctors and the nurses and, and my friends and my family, there was so much love. And I know it's because I was receptive. I was mm -hmm. open and it didn't make it less hard really, but my attention was in a was different elsewhere. place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it shifted the experience. So it's, again, it's a decision. Mm. How do I choose to look at it? Can I see it as a gift and a blessing mm. instead of a curse or a, a suffering? It changes everything. Well, you know, I think we get a clue of, um, in the verse that precedes this one um, in Romans chapter 12. Verse one says, but be not conformed to this world. And the reason I'm mentioning that is that I think so often we want to make the shift and the choice to think differently but the rest of the world is saying if you want to be beautiful you have to wear this perfume or drive this car or live in this neighborhood um you know and so as i often say you you know yourself to be a banana but right now it's fashionable to be to be an orange and the, all the advertisements are saying you know you have to be an orange you have to wear orange you have to smell like mm -hmm. lemon and you're not but you do everything to try and be an orange but of course you're not you're a banana and you end up neither being a good banana or a good orange. And so you know, we need to break out of the, con of yes, the absolutely to what the world is trying to force us into. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, I see that with women that. a lot. You know, um, yes. there are prescribed things that women do nonsense. You know, and and so people are a little shocked when we find you have women bus drivers. You know, in Jamaica and. Um, you know, women doing construction and, and really tough jobs and people are kind of a little taken aback. But those people are not being conformed to what they, the status quo is. They have broken out of that and have made a choice to be who they are and what they want to do. You know, and Reverend me, John, that's one, of, one of that, one of um, an example of that confirmation, conforming is also, so what we believe, what, what our reality is, um, yeah, I have a friend who shared with me an amazing idea for um, our, well, Jamaica has its 60th anniversary celebrations this year. And mm -hmm. she came up with an amazing idea with some real positive statements for, for t-shirts. I mean, I was blown away when I saw it, but in conversation with her, um, I got a sense of the limitation of finances, you know, how am I going to do this? You know, and, and so we also create the the, 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 the the Yes. How, what would you say if, if, if she came to you as, a, um, you know, requesting a practitioner service, what, how would you help her to just um, in, experience that transformation that she needs to really, as we say in Jamaica, broke out and become successful in mm. her business? Well, I think, <clears throat> first of all, I would do what you did, which was praise the great idea and share how amazing it is and how beautiful it is. And then I would listen to what she had to say about the, her fears. And I would ask questions because I think a lot of times when I know for me that sometimes I need to, to say it out loud, what's on my mind and in my heart, that's, that's fear-based. And, and, and once I'm talking, I get to a place where I go, oh, wait, uh, uh, no, no, we're not doing that, right? And so to let her speak and ask questions about the fears is a way of not only becoming aware, but getting it out of her own body. And so, and then I would probably ask some questions like, well, what are some of the opposites? Like I mentioned before, right? What is, what's possible? Or let's treat for some creative ideas to come through to uh, make it easier on the finances or brainstorm or, 
uh, at, because I think the wisdom is already within us. But in that moment, we're so focused on the what's not possible that what is possible cannot come through. So letting her, right? you know, share what that's like for her, the, 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 the fears, and then explore what are some of the possibilities. Because it comes from the same mind, the imagination, the ideas, the the ruminations. It all comes from the same place. Mm. That's, that's very interesting. So, in in other words, the where the idea came from through her, that's the same source from which the whatever resources she needs to make it up um, come to pass, the resources will come from the Absolutely. same source. Absolutely. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so that's as the book says, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, in this teaching, sometimes we can be so afraid of fear. Fear is a gift. It gives us information. And once we have that information, we can make some decisions. I mean, I have a lot of fears, but I'm, I, I've, I've befriended them. Because if I don't befriend them, I curse them. And if I curse them, they're not going to go away. You I'm give giving them power. Them power. Yes. yes, exactly. So it's like one of the things that I experienced when I was going through this health challenge was, was thoughts of my mortality, which I'd never thought about. Uh, and I was like, oh, that's a whole different realm of thinking. That's even when you're jumping out of a plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I need to make peace with. Because it's yeah. inevitable. Yes, we believe in the eternal life, but the body is is not going to go with that eternality. So I I that's my belief anyway. So it's like, oh, I get to explore this belief about the future and about fear. I think most of us, because of COVID and the pandemic, have had to face some fears that we've never had to face and we've had to mm. consider that we could get very sick and that we could die you know and so then you have a culture the the world of the the collective consciousness the race consciousness saying everywhere on the news on the radio on tv in the papers be very afraid be very afraid because that's what was happening and so then we say, oh, the universe is giving me a gift. It's allowing me to explore my fears and I'm going to mine them for gold because the gold is there. It's Absolutely. my growth in consciousness. It's my healing. That, and the, therefore the value, the tremendous value in journaling. I can't tell you how highly I recommend it because then you, 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 you put it in black and white before your very own eyes. And it helps you just to clarify so much about what's going on in, in, internally for you, rather than the little elephant in the room that you, you try to ignore, you know. Um, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, like make okay. a list. Yeah. You know, I suggest to everybody, make a list. What are some of your fears? Once you write oh. them down, once you say them out loud, they already lose steam. Exactly. And then we can kind of say, oh, well, this one, I think I'm going to play with a bit. I'm going to hang out with it a bit. I'm going to explore it a little bit. I'm going to learn. And this one is just plain, ridiculously silly, you know? Yes. And perhaps now is a good time to just appeal to all of our uh, viewers. And, and, and I'd like to welcome each and every one of you. I'm sure some of you have joined us since we started uh, at the top of the hour. And so, um, you know, what questions might you have for Dr. Frankie? Um, just write them in the, the chat and we'll pick them up and we'll pass them on and it will add to the richness of our discussion. Okay, so, um, you, you know, relationships, we've, we've talked about health, we've talked about money, and of course, the, the, con the, the, the thinking that, um, that affects how we engage with each other in relationships at every level, whether, you know, uh, with family, with spouses, significant others, romantic relationships. How do we, um, you know, especially when there's conflict, how can we use this, this idea of transformation of the mind, of choice, 
to to heal when the other person doesn't seem to be um, caving in? And why does it have to be me? Why am I the one to have to make a difference to the relationship? Well, first of all, I think there are times when we really do need to walk away from a relationship if it's harming us. So I support that. But otherwise, we say there's only the one, right? There's only one mind. There's only the one. And we say that love is all there is. And so relationships are fantastic mirrors to show us where we believe that and where we don't. And where so, we're living it and where we're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where we're living the truth principles and where we aren't. So if we can, again, take the time to explore that and say, you know, that's not my experience, it gets us to see what it is that we believe. What do I believe about the oneness of all life? What do I believe about love? And it always comes back to my relationship with God. And my relationships reflect my relationship with myself, my relationship with God, my relationship with life. So my relationships give me information. So I know that before I entered the relationship with my beloved at the moment, that I, my beloved that I'm with now for 16 years, I had a belief that the person that I would want to fall in love with would definitely not want me. And I also had a belief that who wants to be with a minister? You know, it's just annoying. <laughs> Norman, my honey. Because we pray before everything. <laughs> <laughs> and Norman will say to me sometimes when I give him uninvited advice, he says, well, thank you, Reverend Frankie, or he'll tell friends he gets free counseling. <laughs> <laughs> Put you in your oh, place. Yes. I've had to learn to. Mm. So, but it, they're just, it's just a reflection, right? It's just it, yeah. the relationships are showing us what do I believe about love? And so yeah. it's an, again a wonderful opportunity to become more conscious, to have greater clarity, to make some choices, to make some decisions, and to heal. Mm hmm. We have a couple of comments in the chat. We have yes. um, uh, Sheena um, is referring to uh, something she heard Reverend Michael Beckwith say a few weeks ago, she, and, and she quotes him. Jesus was a danger to the status quo, and she says, woohoo, no conforming to the world for that one. You know, yeah. Absolutely. And then so one true. of our ministers, um, Reverend Dr. Sonia Davidson, she says, resist Sonia. not. Yes, Sonia. Uh, resist not, then we could overwrite or write over the old idea, factual but untrue idea, with the truth. And she goes on to say, she loves the idea of accepting fear as a gift, a friend which points the way to what I want, which is the opposite of what I fear. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's a nice idea, seeing, seeing yeah, fear as a friend. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, I think most of most people know Elizabeth Gilbert, right? She wrote yes. Eat, Pray, Love, and she mm -hmm. wrote, um, mm -hmm. I cannot remember right now some of the books, but I love her writing. And one of the things that she talks about in Big Magic, great book, by the way, is that fear doesn't get to drive the car. It gets to sit in the back seat and it doesn't get to choose the music. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really about saying that fear does not get to run my life. It can be here. It can be in the back seat. It can travel with me. It can be my my companion, and I will even take care of it because it's like the little kid inside. But it doesn't get to run the show. You know, that's really it, yeah, right? That's all true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in know, Jamaica, we say in Jamaica, we say we run things. Things don't run we. Things don't run we. I yeah. love that. Things don't yeah, you, run can... we. You, you can borrow that one, as, as would say in Jamaica, for us smalls. Yes. <laughs> you know, just before we came, we came on live um, and, you know, just about to press that go live button, I, I think I shared that 
you know, every time just before a performance, you know, coming out of the world of theater and dance that no matter how prepared I would feel, and, and Reverend John can relate because he also is a, a former dancer, that, that sort of sense of uh, inside when the music, the lights go on and they say, stand by. And that feeling, um, I remember an, an, a very famous actress in Jamaica saying, she says, Sandy, if you don't have that feeling, you're going to screw up. You're going to miss your steps. You're going to forget your lines. Um, if you, that adrenaline is that which pumps us up and that's what makes you say in both the fastest man on the planet yeah, yeah. so that's, that's a good adrenaline. friend to have yes. yeah it's energy it's just energy i agree it's yeah. a good energy i think it's again how we look at it right when i first mm -hmm. became a minister i was terrified of public speaking until somebody said what john was saying that they're just butterflies just teach them how to fly in formation Mm. You know, I love that. Yeah, it's just energy. It's like the energy that makes that. you do well. Yeah. I mean, but the, and the butterfly is his, his, what you call it now, icon. His spirit it, animal. My icon. Mm. Yes. Ah, love that. And it I has love, to do I, with I'm transformation. It so, so it's your, it's your original quote, Reverend John? What? To teach them to fly in form. No, no, where did I, that come from? from? Um, I can't yeah, remember. I don't know who said that. I think it's one of the ministers that said that once, but I think it's a famous person who said it. Yes, indeed. You know, that, that statement from... is really also um, bringing home the idea of be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Because if you say, oh God, I have butterflies, I'm so nervous, versus, hmm, I run these butterflies, I'll tell them how to fly and what they must do. So that sense of being in charge, being in control mm. of my mm. thoughts, of my behavior, that really puts a shift on, you know, what, what's the likely outcome of that experience. Isn't that so? Yeah, and I'm... I don't, I personally feel challenged by the word control, but I, I understand what you mean. And um, one of the ways that I talk about it when I teach meditation in prison is I tell them that story of Viktor Frankl who wrote Man's Search mm. for Meaning. Yes, I think most people have heard of him, but he was in a concentration camp during World War II and his whole family had been killed. Everything had been taken from him and he had his wedding band on. And so the guard asked for the wedding band and he just took it off and gave it to him. And I'm paraphrasing. And the guard said, how could you just give that so easily? He says, because you can take everything from me, but you cannot take my mind. Right. Yes. And then he wrote the book when he came out and was a famous psychotherapist who developed logos therapy. But I talk about that story when I teach meditation very often because these guys feel very much like victims. Our thinking is very foreign to them. And I tell them, I said, you know, you guys, you maybe don't have any control about where you are right now and what's happening in your life. But this is a great opportunity to take the time and to reflect and to decide how you're going to use your own mind, because that's something nobody can take away from you. You know, and oh, so we can call that control, but um, I, I'm coming into a place in my life, in my spiritual evolution where I more and more feel like I don't have any control. God is in surrender. control. And can I surrender uh. to that and trust that? And in trusting that, I can choose how to think. I can decide what to do with what I'm experiencing and what I'm thinking and what pops up uh, as fear, right? And so it's just that, again, being present and having our own awareness. Yeah, well then yeah. would you say that the renewal comes from changing the narrative? Uh, the, the stories that you attach to whatever. Story. Yeah, yeah. Story. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had lunch yeah. with a friend the other day and I was 
sharing something I experienced with her. And w as we were talking about it, it was the experience was we had a completely different point of view about the experience we had. And it was just a reminder of how different we all are and how much freedom we have to change the story, to look at the story in a different way. Absolutely. Oh, uh, I should go to the chat. Uh, um, by the way, the, uh, Marcia has said that the flying formation um, quote comes from the Toastmasters. <gasps> ah, yes, yes. That indeed. makes sense. Thank you, Marcia. Wonderful. Yes. Thank yes. you. Um, you Reverend there's always Sonia. somebody who, who can point you in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Yes. Re Reverend Sonia says, love, love it. Relationships are a mirror to provide the image of how effectively I am living that which I say what I believe. And um, Sheena. Yes, Reverend I, Sonia. Ooh, yes. Ooh. And Sheena says, as I practice the cleansing of my mirror, and in brackets she puts consciousness, my relationships get clearer, brighter, and sweeter. Isn't that Ooh. nice? Yes, Ooh, so yes. true. More, more power to you, Sheena. So, so there, there's time. something interesting here, uh, Sandy. Ooh. Um, because I think women have this more than men do, but mm -hmm. I know so many women that are in relationships that are trying to change their partner, their man, their wife, they, they, their partner, they try to change them. They cannot accept them the way they are. And so they have this idea in their mind that if only he, she, it, we, they were different. So there's an, there's an element of acceptance and just doing our own work instead of trying to change the other person. Yes, <laughs> I have a, a, a joke I give to my um, soon to be wed couples and it's about the very nervous bride and she's at the rehearsal, she said to the, the minister, I'm so nervous. And he said, I'll tell you a little secret. When you get to the door of the church, just focus on the aisle, just be present to the, that long aisle in front of you. And I'll be at the top, you know, and then when you get up to me at the top of the aisle, focus your attention on the altar and I'll announce the first hymn and just be mindful of the first hymn. So there you go, the aisle, the altar and the hymn. She said, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Minister. Thank you. So the day of the wedding, she was nervous and she said, oh, I'm going to practice. I'll alter him. I'll alter him. I'll alter him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. gonna try that. Not to him or her. <laughs> mm -mm. No, no and that can, that can be difficult, right? But it's also becoming aware that when we're in a relationship and we cannot accept a person exactly the way we are, they are, that we end up suffering, and it's again a reflection of how we cannot accept ourselves the way we are. And so I work on this all the time because I have plenty of judgments and complaints in my mind. I don't speak them anymore because I know it's not about him. It's about me. <laughs> you know, it's even little things like comb your hair before we go out. <laughs> I, I remember one time, the one time my, my mother was really furious with, with my father. She said, darling, if I were you, I wouldn't wear that tie with that shirt. And he said, well, you're not me and you don't wear ties on shirts. <laughs> and he was furious. But he was right. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. He's right. Yes, he's right. Yeah. Um, Reverend Thonia has a question. She's asking, what do you say to someone who is on his or her way out of this incarnation but is terrified of the unknown? <sighs> Feel the fear, but do it anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, I have a um, meditation teacher. He's a he's a Sufi sheikh, and he says that um, at the end of life, it's the ego that says, "No, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go." It's the spirit that wants to surrender and can let go, but the ego is like, "No, no, no." And so I think that first thing is really important is just being present with them and making sure mm -hmm. that we're not 
attached to their experience. Um, that we allow them to have that experience because allowing them to have that experience and just being present within our own heart can create a space of, of more ease and more lightness. So we can invite them to breathe with us or we can invite them to take a deep breath. And I think it's important to acknowledge the fear and to talk about it if they can. And then um, remind them that it's okay to let go, that it's safe, that they're ready, that there's, that there's uh, a wonderful opportunity to just, to just embrace letting go and trusting if they have faith, if they're religious, if they're spiritual, to trust that everything that they've learned in their lives and everything that they've believed is true now. I don't know if that helps, but I think it's very common that people are very afraid. I can, I often see that when people are dying and they're not conscious, that the reason they're taking so much time is because their soul is working something out. And, mm -hmm. and if we can trust that, uh, then we can be of assistance quietly and in consciousness. Mm -hmm. so if, you have, if, you, if she has another yeah. question about it, if I didn't answer it, um, she can let me know. Okay. Um, and then, of course, Steve, um, there's a, a, a comment that fear is the divine alchemist in disguise. Isn't that something? Oh, that's beautiful, Steve. I'm writing that down. The divine fear alchemist. Fear is the divine alchemist in disguise. In disguise. I mm. love that. <clears throat> You know, yeah, we, you, you spoke very strongly about choice. But if we were to, to, to have a menu of things to do, what could I do? What could any of us do um, to, to sort of accelerate our own personal transformation? Well, I think there are in what you're saying, there are about 10 things. That's the first thing how my brain is firing off, right? Um, but the first thought I have is what acceleration, you know, what does acceleration mean, right? And does it really exist? So I think mostly it is about... You know, I love the story about Michelangelo when he was sculpting David, is that David was already in the sculpture. He was just chipping away the parts that didn't belong, right? And I, so I think that's what it's about. I think it's about really having awareness of what serves us and what doesn't serve us, what we need to heal and not, and what we need to let go of, and what we need to to truly see to be free like i'm very aware and i think most people are what my flaws are i'm very aware what disturbs me i'm very aware what gets in the way um and i think most of us are and i i, I agree with john journaling can be very helpful with that where we just journal and just say you know what breaks my heart what makes my heart ache for me at the moment I'm experiencing a lot of grief around what's happening in the world and what we've done to our beautiful planet. And I'm not avoiding it. I'm not ignoring it. I'm not denying it. I'm diving in. I'm comfortable with grief because I think grief is a divine alchemist in the skies as well. <laughs> and so, you know, it's just like, oh, that's so interesting. And um, I feel a lot of sadness, but I, I'm trusting that. So it's to trust the experiences that we're having and not judging them as good or bad because I, because on the other side of grief is love and they're both there. It's like when you lose a person, you feel grief because you loved. The reason I feel grief for the planet is because I love it so much and I love humanity. So I feel like there is gold to be mined in this momentary experience in my heart.
that's that then will naturally accelerate my growth it will naturally evolve me so acceleration and evolution is the icing on the cake for the work that we're doing the inner work that we're doing uh, yeah I, I also like to think you know back to this this the icon of the butterfly you know that the caterpillar has no idea what it's going to become but it has to transform and so we have to become what we were created to be. Um, we have, it may take this lifetime or it may take however many millennia, but we are becoming what the creator meant us to be. Yes, I, I love the first thing you said about awareness. Um, it's very interesting that in emotional intelligence, it's the first, the first step, so to speak, the first um, domain. I need to know what I'm feeling and to acknowledge that. And then I can make a choice about what I do with those mm -hmm. feelings, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I think sometimes yeah. in our teaching, um, you know, we, we feel ashamed of, mm -hmm. of the fear or the, you know, um, the, the questioning that comes up for us. And so we, we try and sweep it under the carpet and say, oh, everything is fine, you know? Um, we're going to mm -hmm. talk about truth student syndrome, TSS, you know? Um, because I'm I'm a true student. I'm not supposed to, you know, have a down day, you know, and and mm -hmm. want, want to strangle my kids and you know, whatever. <laughs> and so oh. I think that that facing up to what's going on inside you is really an important part of the journey to wholeness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, and said, you know what? You said the word. You really, mm. you said the word. Shame. Shame says something is inherently wrong with me. Shame exactly. is just a symptom of feeling separate from our own divinity. And that's yep. an important part to heal. And I do agree that in our teaching, uh, I mean, I've been in the teaching for a long time. And when I came in it, shame was normal. If you had a cold, somebody would come up to you and say, what's in your consciousness? You know, and, and I think we tend to bring that from other traditions, in my case, Catholicism. And um, it's something that we have to heal because even mm -hmm. having been diagnosed with cancer uh, a couple of years ago, last year, there was... Uh, this this thought in my mind that was like, what? Me? I'm a science of mind person. I'm a minister. I'm a student. I've worked really hard on my, my growth. What's wrong with my consciousness? And I had to quickly let that go because I realized it created a whole other realm of suffering that wasn't necessary. So I decided to befriend the diagnosis and to ask myself, wow. what is cancerous in my thinking that I need to heal and let go of? What is cancerous in my environment, in my world? And so yeah. I've had to let go of relationships, habits, thoughts, thought patterns, Wonderful. especially the ones that were self-critical because that's cancerous. Mm -hmm. Yes, right? but that's so, so weird. Wow. Yes. That, that's, that's powerful, you know. So I'm, I'm really hearing that we we have to consciously uh, or be present to maybe both external and internal factors that are perhaps um, stopping us from allowing that the transformation to take place, whether it is some somebody, some physical person or you know something that we're feeling inside and uh, we are kind of getting to the top of all, of the hour and you know it's i don't know where the time goes far, when we do these goes. things so we must perhaps have one more um question steve is asking please expand shame please expand on shame feeling separate from my own divinity Let's yeah i mean Right. Shame is like something is wrong with me. Something in me is inherently broken. That's shame because it's different from guilt. Guilt is, oh, I've done something wrong and I need to do something about it. Shame is about our being nature. It's holding a belief mm -hmm. about our being nature that's mm -hmm. bad, wrong, and not uh, enough, inferior, not enough. Whatever. Yeah, and it separates us from God. It's really saying, well, you know, this is a part of me 
that God does not in, inhabit. If we say God is everything, God is in us, then how can there be places where we say, well, God is not here, whether it's my fear, my not feeling good enough, my uh, having habits that are harmful to myself or others. The way that we heal that is to just remember it's just uh, a definition of separation from God. I mean, look at Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were happily nakedly dancing in the garden until somebody made them aware that they were naked and they went, ah! Yeah. Right? And so... <laughs> Right. And so it's it's that feeling of, oh, nobody can know about this. And yeah. if it's something that is harmful, go see a therapist, a practitioner, a minister. But it's yep. just that feeling of, yep. of yep. something in me is inherently wow. broken. Oh, oh boy, Reverend Frankie, this has been an absolutely <sighs> divine. I mean, can we do another hour, please? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Know. I'm in part oh. two. <laughs> <laughs> well, who it's knows? Been, it's been, I mean, it's been uh, which I knew it would be, Moon Maiden. You, you are just so absolutely, you know, yes, indeed, indeed. And I, I'm so glad that Steve asked you about that shame because it, it really is a big, big, big issue for a lot of people. Uh, you know, we, te we, we teach babies to be ashamed, you know, if, if they poop in their diapers, ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah. You know, bad boy, bad girl. Bad boy, bad That's girl, where it you know. starts. Yeah, it starts right there, you know. And so it's something that we need to heal. And I say to my prisons all the time, blame, shame and regret keep people in prison and not just the people behind bars. Wow. Thank yes. you, awesome. Dr. Frankie, wow. for your light, for your love, yeah. for your yes. candor and for your beauty. Namaste. Oh, yeah. I adore oh, you. You know awesome. that. And Sandy, it was yeah. lovely meeting you. I'm so grateful. Yes, yes. you know. Do you I'm want me Steve. to do a closing treatment? I yes, do please. indeed, but hold on a little bit. Um, Steve has, has said thank you so much for the creating the distinction for him between shame and guilt. Yes. Yeah. yes. So yeah, it's yes. it's Good. it has been an awesome evening. And yes, we would love you to pray us out. Um, yes. And I will just um, you know, yeah look forward yeah. to your closing treatment yeah you ready for that okay yes ma'am <clears throat> all right so let's put our hands on our hearts because our hearts <sighs> need a little love today and so let's know right here right now that there is this infinite love available to us it is forever flowing through us we know this <sighs> by means of the breath and we know this by means of the heartbeat that bumps the blood around so perfectly with every beat and so that's just a teeny tiny semblance of the oneness of all life the relationship that we have with the divine presence whether we call it god buddha allah spirit mother nature rasta whatever name we give it it is that which is without a name it is the infinite presence of life and love and joy and laughter and grace and even fear as a friend, not as a foe. And so tonight we simply open our heart, our mind, our body and our soul to this divine flow, trusting it more than we did an hour ago, surrendering Ooh. to it more effortlessly and more easily than in our last breath allowing it to have its way with us, allowing it to sweep through our very being away the crumbs of shame, fear, guilt, worry, anxiety, sense of limitation or lack. We just let it sweep away and make it grist for the mill, make it compost for our developing consciousness. Because truly, 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 we can trust all of our being, all of life, all of our experiences as ways to awaken to the divine presence within, allowing healing to happen, which is really just about remembering that we are whole, perfect and complete already. And so life is given to us to not just remember this, but to live it. And for that, we are deeply grateful as well as for this wonderful session for 
for CSL Jamaica, for Reverend John, for Sandy, all the practitioners and ministers, all the members and friends, all who are a witness tonight, whether it's today or tomorrow or the day after, because it is just a reminder of the oneness of all life and how that is ever supporting us. And so it is. And so it beautifully is. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. I mean, I have, to, I have to explain. Wow, you! <laughs> Reverend John, you, I, I see a hand up. Was it before or, or, it, or it's, it's just... I don't um, know. That's it's, your hand up. Is it me? No, no, no. I, I don't know how that happens. Wow. So, you know, I'm so grateful for friends who have joined us on, on Facebook Live. And for each and every one of you who sort of just added to the consciousness of this experience, thank you so much for being a part of this. Thank you to Steve, to Vance for being our, our technical support. And of course, friends, if you feel moved to support our ministry, do visit our donate page at donate.templeoflightcsl.org. Uh, and it will mm -hmm. sort of share with you how you can contribute to making us um, enabling us to continue to be a beacon of light to the world. Until next time, next next month for, for our um, our new um, Lifeline series, we'll let you know what that will be as it, as it gets a little closer. We thank you all for being a part of this, Reverend Dr. Frankie, thank you, and Reverend John and everyone. Until next time, oh, lovely, bless you and see you all soon again. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Namaste. Bye. Namaste. Oh. Uh, excellent. Good. Yeah. Wow.